4,500 cows are being raised on this ranch in Mato Grosso do Sul. Their lives only worth the meat they produce. It's a medium-sized enterprise, devoid of rustic farmyard charm. Manager Federico Moreno studied economics and usually works from his desk, except when clients come to visit. This client asks to have number 12802 checked. It takes just seconds to check the genetic data bank by radio and find out who the father of the animal is. Moreno says cattle in Brazil used to be slaughtered when they were five, on average. Now they're two or three. Today our work consists of breeding animals that have higher meat yields by a certain age. We make a selection, choosing the most promising animals that develop the most muscle tissue. Step by step we improve quality and efficiency. The aim is to produce a bigger yield per hectare. The livestock are chosen at high-end fairs, like this one. On display are the grandparents of the filet steak of tomorrow. The South Asian Zebu cattle breed is the most common in Brazil. It has a good tolerance for the heat, and breeding programs have led to genetic improvements in recent decades. Breeders and buyers analyze the physical makeup of the animal down to the smallest detail. They're looking to create the best. A prize winner here costs over a million euros. This is a sort of test laboratory where genetic traits are reproduced that are later sent out to graze and become meat. The genetic research lab is run by the state-owned Agricultural Institute. This department specializes in beef cattle. Many in the meat sector call it the pearl of the nation. It has driven Brazil's cattle breeding boom. In terms of efficiency, we research which animal eats the least and produces the most. That's our main aim for the future, producing animals that eat less and produce more meat. The animal feed is specially chosen to suit the local conditions. In Brazil, cattle graze on pastures and eat grass. The scientists analyze which is the most nourishing and which grows the fastest. They frequently cross-breed grass varieties, most of them originally from Africa, to develop new specially adapted strains. The results are marketed under the names of Mombaso or Maasai. Ten years of research to produce an optimum kilo of meat. Brazil is the best location to meet the growing global demand for animal protein. We don't just have the surface area required, but also the necessary technology. Technologically, we're in the position to double or even triple our meat production. Today, one in three kilos of meat on the global market comes from Brazil. One in ten comes from the firm JBS. This is one of 140 slaughterhouses it owns worldwide. The company kills up to 90,000 animals every day. Here, Brazil's national strategy to supply the world with meat is palpable. JBS has grown to become the world's biggest meat processor and exporter. It's gone from a family business to a global player with the help of massive investments from the state-owned development bank. Brazil's government is promoting the growth. JBS currently has a turnover of some $30 billion a year and in a short space of time has absorbed a host of competitors around the world. We're growing so strongly because the opportunities have presented themselves and because it's what our clients want. We are meeting the demand of our clients, and that keeps on growing. The growth rates are tremendous, especially in the emerging economies, 
We don't want to dominate the world. We just want to serve the market. But environmental organizations like Greenpeace Brazil argue this is at the expense of the Amazon rainforest. They say that most meat factories don't properly source their beef, buying animals from illegal farms in the Amazon basin. The deforested areas are colored red on the map. An environmental study attributes 80 percent of this logging to the beef industry. The study was sent to international retailers with the aim of putting Brazilian meat producers under pressure. In numerous meetings with the meat processing plants, we established that their big international clients had threatened to cancel their contracts if the Brazilians didn't change their approach. No big brand or global concern that buys meat from Brazil wants its name to be tarnished by deforestation. So they have demanded that the Brazilian meat producers look at their farmers and do something about the problem. The sector is taking measures, but it still has to show the world their bearing fruit. Like many cattle ranchers, Frederico Moreno says he doesn't need more land to increase his production. He's pragmatic about the subject of environmental protection. There's the perception that cattle breeders are always against environmentalists. That's not how we see it. I think environmentalists will help increase the price of the product in the future. Growing demand will lead to higher prices when production is limited. Moreno has already halved the pasture used by his herd and now uses the rest for other purposes. But with 2,000 hectares of grazing land, there's still plenty of space for juicy profits.